Tesla is on track to produce 600,000 electric cars in China annually. For the past three months, Tesla has maintained an amazing output of more than 50,000 electric vehicles per month in China, demonstrating that the Gigafactory Shanghai could possibly produce 600,000 electric vehicles annually. Tesla sold 52,859 China-made automobiles in November, according to the China Passenger Car Association CPCA, which revealed its November sales figures this morning. Greetings everyone, hello there and thank you for visiting our YouTube channel. This is where we talk about the most recent news, rumors, and viewpoints. So let's get started, but first, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. A total of 21,127 automobiles were exported, with the remaining 31,732 vehicles being sold in China. Compared to the previous month, when Tesla sold 54,391 China-made vehicles, the figures are down somewhat, but they're up by an astounding 348% year on year, according to the company. Furthermore, for the third month in a row, Tesla's Gigafactory Shanghai has maintained production of more than 50,000 vehicles each month. Things may change in the future due to supply chain concerns facing the auto industry, but for the time being it appears that the Gigafactory Shanghai is producing an annualized output of more than 600,000 electric vehicles each year. Tesla CEO Elon Musk announced earlier this year that the Gigafactory Shanghai has now exceeded the company's Fremont factory in terms of production capacity and that the Chinese factory has been designated as the company's new main export center. When Tesla first announced plans for the Gigafactory Shanghai, the automaker made it clear that it did not intend to export cars outside of China. However, as production began ramping up, the company changed its mind and began exporting automobiles. China's capital city has gone from starting construction in December 2018 to launching production in December 2019. Within just two years of beginning production, it has grown to become the world's largest and most productive electric car manufacturer by considerable margin. Even though some analysts are pointing to a decline in sales in China, it is pointless to compare sales month to month because more of the country's production is devoted to exportation early in the quarter. Next year, when the Gigafactory Berlin begins to produce in large quantities, the true test of Tesla's Chinese demand will be conducted. Then we'll have a clearer notion of how many cars Tesla can actually sell in China, which will be a relief. When it came to Fremont, one of the most important factors was figuring out how to optimize manufacturing and production lines. Once they had completed the Model 3 manufacturing line, it was just a matter of locating a suitable location in the factory and equipping it in the same manner as the other production lines in the facility. As Tesla constructs new factories, it is imperative that the company understands the type of machinery that will be required where it will be located, how it will be used, and so on. They are well aware of the type of stuff that will be required, and they have contracts in place for it years in advance. Let's not forget that in 2013, when only a few thousand cars had been produced, Tesla entered into a battery contract with Panasonic that would allow them to produce 100,000 vehicles per year by 2017. They also stated that they will produce 20,000 vehicles in 2013, which was criticized by critics. While this, they produced 22,500 vehicles that year and exceeded 100,000 by 2017, despite producing only a small number of Model 3 vehicles that year. The supply chain issue was actually more of a challenge for Tesla when it came to supplying the world with cars, because transporting everything from Fremont was far from optimal. Having manufacturing closer to the final destination off the automobiles should actually make things easier for Tesla. Shipping batteries from Japan to Germany takes about the same amount of time and work as shipping batteries from Japan to California. The distances between the two points are comparable. Everything else will very certainly follow suit, and in some situations it will be quicker to get some products into some factories than it was for them to get into California in the first place. It's like hearing a broken record over and over Tesla has built automobiles on a custom basis since its inception. Buyers go online and define whatever features and options they desire and then place their orders. The number of possible combinations was so huge at the beginning of the game that it was conceivable to have a completely unique configuration. It wasn't the kind of thing where someone would be not be able to walk into a dealership and buy a car. Tesla did not design them in this manner. Since there was always a backlog of orders, the number of cars sold in any given month was never a reliable indicator of demand for Tesla's vehicle. A large number of people on the waiting list was an indicator of high demand. As a result of the rivalry, it was the situation that low sales are indicative of low demand. Other businesses delivered automobiles to dealerships as quickly as they could sell them, rather than as quickly as they could manufacture them. As a result, if cars lingered on the lot unclaimed, there was a reasonable expectation that subsequent sales would be weaker. The following is not a test of any kind. What matters is the number of units sold on a model-by-model -model basis. 
and this is what the rest of the industry measures. If they manufacture a particular automobile, what matters is how well it sells in comparison to its other competitors. Sales of Tesla automobiles have been extremely strong when compared to comparable vehicles from other manufacturers, regardless of the driving factor. It was never a question of gasoline versus electric because Tesla's car sold well when compared to comparably priced internal combustion engines of the same body type as their electric counterparts. As a result, Tesla has always been hampered by the notion that you can't start by establishing a plant that would produce 500,000 cars per year and then putting a low-cost car on the market and expecting it to sell. The difficulty is that there isn't a method to pay for anything as extravagant as this. As a result, Tesla grew as quickly as it could, seizing income from sales and investing in it further expansion. However, skeptics viewed this as evidence that Tesla had no path to profitability rather than acknowledging that the money being spent was not for the production of existing automobiles, but rather was being spent on business development to expand its customers' base. Beginning with a facility in Fremont, then adding factories in Texas, Germany and China would have made it impossible for them to have the ability to produce goods on an unrestricted basis later on in the process. The competitor, on the other hand, already had factories where they were needed, had a large number of models that weren't selling as quickly as the company can manufacture them, and yet doesn't need to open new factories in order to introduce new models into the marketplace. In a country like the United States, approximately 70% of individuals can charge their devices at home without any problems, or would be able to with little electrical repair. EV sales are still a small percentage of total automobile sales, and infrastructure will continue to improve. But when EV sales are only a small percentage of total automobile sales, despite EV companies producing as many cars as they are capable of selling, it does not imply a restriction on the ability to sell cars, and it will not for many years to come. That's all I've got for today. Please leave your ideas and suggestions in the comments section below. And please share your thoughts on today's topic, so be with. Your prompt responses give me the hope that we will be able to work on additional videos in the future and provides me with the motivation that navigates me in making exciting videos and on exciting topics for you guys. Thank you for taking the time to watch and have a good day. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed our videos. We'll see you soon in the next video. Until then, stay tuned and all ears everyone, our next video is about to come.